Welcome to A Tale of Two Cities, a special series on Vion. The series will turn every leaf to find beautiful characteristics and similarities between cities that are in no way an obvious likely pair. We'll bring out the fascinating parallels that otherwise hide in plain sight. Having studied from Harvard and having established a global presence with his own practice, C.P. Kokreja Architects, urban planner and architect Dikshu Kokreja takes us on a journey to eight international cities and compares them with eight Indian cities while talking to presidents, prime ministers and mayors. Today he pairs Tirana in Albania and Panaji in India. Let's go over to Dikshu now and see what he has to share. The children of tomorrow will think of our generation as the people who plotted arbitrary demarcations on our common planet. But despite the wars, pillaging and civil feuds, there have been countless examples of national harmony trumping all power struggles that men face. In today's episode, we will closely observe Tirana in Albania and Panaji in Goa, who have both struggled to stamp in their own uniqueness owing to endless invasions, foreign influence or isolationism. <music> Albania is a prime example of social organization and religious harmony being practiced as a code of honor, as a way of life and a yardstick with which to measure the nature of a man. Much like in Goa, where people from different faiths live in incorruptible harmony. Goa saw change of power from Maratha to Islamic kings and then finally to the Portuguese who ruled for over 450 years and are responsible for being the major influence behind the architecture, food, culture and even toponyms of Goa. Even though Albania and Goa are approximately 6,000 kilometers away from each other, the similarities between the two are stark. Here, to disentomb them with me, is the Honorable Prime Minister of Albania, Mr. Edi Rama, who is one of the most influential politicians to have led Albania. It is truly an honor to be here with you well. and to be able to decipher many of the aspects that we know and yet we don't fully understand about Albania. So let me begin by asking you about the BESA, the code of honor which uh, Albania is known to have. In India, we have something called Atithi Devo Bhava, which translates into guest is God. And I know in Albania, BESA has been something which has been a part of Albanian culture. Tell us more about this Albanian culture of BESA and also otherwise about the country, the people and their dreams and aspirations. Thank you for doing this. Uh, it's really a unique occasion to communicate with uh, an audience that uh, is far away in uh, geographical terms, but it's not so far away in uh, uh, spiritual terms. And first of all, I have to tell you that uh, the Albanian language is a unique one, uh, has nothing to do with any other, is one of the branches of the Indo-European languages, and guess what? It is a, a, a passage from the Sanskrit. Is that right? Yes. So uh, this should be known in India. I know about this uh, guest is God in India, but here it's uh, slightly different. Here is also about the house and uh, in our first common law, the Albanian canon, uh, is written that the house of the Albanian belong to God and the guest. So you are our guest, you are our God. And Albania was the only country 
in Europe to have more Jews after the Second World War than before. A country that the last, the last list we, uh, we delivered to Yad Vashem uh, speaks about uh, more than 3,000 3, Jews that were sheltered and saved and where even Albanian families risked their lives and not only their lives but they gave up their people to protect the Jews. We are, we are sheltered to more than 3,000 Iranian refugees as we speak who are in bad terms with the regime back there. Uh, we have sheltered uh, half a million Albanians from Kosovo. We were the first to open the door to the Afghans after the mess there and after uh, you know, I think it was, uh, it was a moral obligation of uh, all the NATO countries to at least open the door for them who worked for us there. You don't need to be a believer to protect uh, religious communities and the, religion and the right of faith of the others. Because, uh, because a country, a place, a space where God is forbidden is a hell also for them who don't believe in God. I want to talk a bit about culture. Albania as a nation has gone through various periods from the Ottoman invasions and then the period of communism, the uh, Italian fascism which was here. Albania has yet been a country which has been known not to be really striving in war, but there has been a sense of peace here. In Goa, for example, one sees that we have had uh, the Marathas and then a long period when uh, the Portuguese uh, ruled Goa for almost 450 years. For example, if I talk about the architecture, the spatial organization of a typical uh, Goan home is around a courtyard and it has a mix of European design elements and Indian decorative features. Do we have things like this happening here in uh, the architecture of Albania as well? We have always been, you know, peaceful and also fearful of uh, enemies coming. So, uh, for example, we have a beautiful sea, but we don't have really a sea life tradition. And if you see uh, the villages uh, in the seaside, they are built up in some, in some uh, mountains and hills that are reachable with a certain level of difficulty. Because uh, we always feared the sea as being the gate from where enemies came. At the end, you know, uh, we, we, we don't need to force the comparisons because there are similarities uh, everywhere, you know, we are all humans at the end and uh, with all the beautiful uh, differences and the varieties of, uh, of traditions, uh, at the end there are similarities. Absolutely, and that's exactly what Tale of Two Cities is about. And if we talk about yourself, uh, of course, back sitting in Delhi, I knew you were the tallest prime minister in the world that I'm going to be interacting with. But the fact that here is an artist, here is someone who has been not only an artist, a professor, and from there on the mayor of Tirana, and finally leading the nation. It's, it's really literally you've had a finger in every aspect of how this country has evolved. And I find a great affinity there when I see that there's somebody from an artistic background who has come there and leading the nation yeah. from all aspects. Tallest, tallest, uh, yeah, maybe, but I'm not sure because I've seen some like me, like uh, President of Montenegro, President of Serbia, so in this region there are tall people. But one thing is sure, I'm the best artist among prime ministers in the world. <laughs> and, That's true. And uh, by no doubt the best prime minister among artists. This is 100% true. I, I have to agree with that completely because here is a prime minister who's... But you can't disagree because I am the only, so there are, no, there are no others to make the comparison. No, so here is an artist who becomes the prime minister of the country, and he has decided to change the entire vocabulary, the built environment of the city. 
everybody that I have interacted with so far internationally, and I, when I mention about our uh, upcoming interaction with you, they say, oh, he's the man who's painted the city in a different color altogether. So that is fantastic. But let me give it a political note here. How do you see color as a language which can also start having any kind of political influences? Listen, it's dangerous to uh, try and transfer the art language and uh, the art uh, objectives in politics because art is not democratic. Art is a very, it's a very uh, authoritarian and even totalitarian uh, exercise. You can't do democratic art. Uh, art is a matter of uh, straightforward choice and you cannot treat uh, people like uh, you know, uh, tubes of paint. Politics is about uh, compromises, is about uh, learning to live with them who are, uh, who have a different opinion, and is about, uh, at the end, uh, possibly disagreeing graciously. I'm going to move on to another point here. I'd like to just understand that, uh, you know, 70% of Albania is mountainous and um, it, how does the, is, does that pose an infrastructure challenge for development of this country? It does, but it's very interesting. Uh, our whole existence has been based on the mountains as our fortress. And our whole dream is to be in the seaside. You see the seaside, the seaside was desert uh, before and of course with some uh, infrastructure that was built during communism but uh, nothing, uh, nothing uh, serious and now it's booming and this is also uh, you know dangerous because uh, it's also spoiling somehow our beautiful seaside. True, um, when we were looking at um in this tale of two cities about Tirana and uh, Goa. Goa, for that matter, is considered the uh, cultural capital of India or the uh, carnival capital of India. That city has a certain vibe which attracts not just domestic tourists from all across India but from the world and literally every space or uh, every public space that you visit in Goa, it feels like it's going to erupt into a carnival anytime. It has that kind of festive flair to it, and so does its architecture, its crafts, its food. All these things are there in Goa. Uh, and we see that there is a lot of evolvement that has happened in Tirana, where you see this becoming literally like a culture capital. We have the Tirana Design Week. There's a lot of uh, development and focus that has come into Tirana in the recent years about evolving it as a design center, as a cultural place. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Tirana developed uh, during communism with these uh, ultra-functionalist buildings uh, with no identity, dormitories for the working class, let's say, uh, and uh, the part of the heritage uh, that is uh, our source of uh, pride and also energy is what has been built before. And then with, uh, with democracy and capitalism, uh, Tirana entered in a barbaric era. Uh, the first 10 years were just squatting everywhere, building illegally everywhere, uh, going back from a very collectivistic society where no private property was, property was allowed, where we had very few thousands of cars, to a no man's land where everyone could build everywhere and so on. And then when I, when I was elected mayor, I, I might say uh, was able to start the reverse process. The city of beautiful energy and uh, is a city that now is going in the next level with the developments and with the towers and with the buzz uh, of life in the, in the night and uh, it's becoming more and more an attractive city and I am sure that uh, at the end of this decade Tirana will be the city 
of this, uh, of this region. India, of course, and our Honorable Prime Minister is at the forefront of globally of uh, you know, pledging the country towards moving towards uh, initiatives which will take care of climate change. But could you share with us some thoughts that you have in mind and that um, Albania is moving towards? We are, we are blessed and cursed in the same time uh, because we are 100% renewable. We don't have uh, any fossil fuel energy. But cursed because all our renewables so far are hydro. So we depend very much from the humor of the guy up. So uh, uh, if uh, he's not sweating hard, uh, then, uh, you know, or if he's not crying hard, uh, then we have problem. Uh, so we are now trying to diversify uh, with some solar some wind, but at the end, uh, what Albania or Goa or, or cities like us that are, I don't know, hundreds of thousands, uh, maybe millions, I don't know uh, how much uh, do is uh, not relevant vis-a-vis uh, -vis what India as a country, what uh, the big countries uh, do. And uh, when the big countries uh, do not, does not do enough, then we are all doomed to fail. I agree with you, and which is why I feel heartened to see the initiatives that India is taking up so seriously. I cannot help but ask you one last question. Being from a shared fraternity of um, art and architecture, um, I've always looked up to you and wondered how does an artist run a country? So I'm going to again go back and ask you this question that as an artist, of course you've worn many hats and you're an extremely talented player and may I mention here a star basketball player as well. So from being a sportsman, but most importantly an artist, how do you perceive the future of your country? Uh, basketball helped me uh, in many ways. Uh, collective sports uh, help you to understand society, to understand community, to understand dynamics between people to understand solidarity, to understand uh, power, to understand leadership. Uh, so I'm thankful to that, uh, for that to basketball. But basketball helped me also to fight my asthma and uh, to be able to get out of Albania in a time when nobody could get out of Albania and to be able to visit uh, uh, art museum uh, and to, 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 to be able to to watch uh, for real uh, artworks that here were not uh, possible to be watched and were even forbidden. So it was a beautiful thing to play basketball for all these reasons. And then for me, art uh, helps me a lot. Uh, it's like praying, it's like a prayer, while politi politics is like a fight. So uh, art, when I do art, uh, I somehow pray. Uh, when I do politics, I always fight, so uh, it's a combination. And the way I do art now, it's, uh, it's part of my, my daily life, because I, I paint while I work, and I work while I paint in my desk. So uh, the office, uh, my office of Prime Minister is also my atelier, so... Uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice thing, but I would never say that this is about a category because uh, one should be careful, you know. There are, there are artists that can do good to the world, there are artists that can do very bad to the world, and uh, there are politicians that can do very good, there are politicians that can do disasters, so it's not about the category. So um, it would be great if our viewers who are watching this across the world, if they could get a peek into your office and atelier. This is not precisely my house, but still you are God. So uh, you can uh, enter uh, wherever you want in this building. Our foray into discovering similarities between the two cities and countries, Tirana and Goa, and Albania and India, gathered us a huge tally of facets where we may confer. The Indian subcontinent, 
from ancient times has been transformed by the empires and cultures, including pro-Albanian tribes in the mid-centuries, that gave rise to its uniqueness. Albanians are an ancient people who are direct descendants of the Illyrians. Their language has a branch of its own in the Indo-European group of languages. They have seen the rise and fall of the Roman civilization, the Ottomans, Italian fascism, and the black curtain of communism. I thank Prime Minister Eddie Rama to be a part of the show and for showing us such beautiful facets of your country. People swear by the kind of fish delicacies and other seafood that you get here in Kolkata. And another aspect of Kolkatans is their love for sweets. It's, it's called the land of sweets. Um, for us here in Melbourne, uh, food, it's beyond a sustenance, it's an obsession. And we're very proud of our food offering.